welcome back everyone in this video we're going to talk about building logics and building logics in arduino and tinkercad and specifically speaking we have already seen how you can make simple logics with simple circuits now we're going to talk about boolean circuits as well okay because that's something which is like very common and which happens very common as well and electronics specifically you would come across a lot of times at this problem that you want to build a logical gate now this logical gate can be around multiple sensors it can be around multiple conditions it can be around multiple other aspects of robot as well now before we actually jump into robots i feel that it's very important that we understand it on electronics and once we have understood it in electronics then it's going to be much more easier for doing it on robotics as well now let's start by understanding a simple boolean circuit now the thing that you see over here is a not gate okay a not function and this is an electronic circuit for that now we're going to try to recreate this thing and see how does this work on tinkercad and then we'll understand how you can create such circuits as well the reason why i'm taking this example in particular is because this is quite simple and it's easy to understand as well okay so we'll go to our tinkercad we add our resistor that's one which is there we start to rotate it with this tool okay we'll keep our favorite value which is 220 ohm okay if you don't remember just remember this it's very important then we'll add a power supply i think i'll go with the three volt battery which is quite good and i'm gonna connect it like this move it a little here and fix this point here now when this is fixed i am going to add a switch which is going to be like this i'm going to rotate it again and then i'm going to keep it here and fix this as well perfect now we have already fixed this circuit and this is how it looks now over here if you see we have built the power supply we have added the resistor now we need a source or an output device for this case i'm going to use an led which is a good use case as well and i'm going to start to rotate it like this and figure out the anode is over here so in that case i have to flip it again perfect now we have it in the correct position I'm going to take it up, all up, connect it over here. Perfect. And I'm then I'm going to take this from here and take it, connect it over here. All right. Okay. Now let's start the simulation and see what happens. Now this is connected. If we turn it off, then we have this LED blinking or LED glowing essentially. Now, if you see over here, when the switch is in the off state okay then the led is blinking or glowing but if, if i turn it on then the led goes off the reason why that happens is because electricity or the current takes the shortest path which is from here and in that case it doesn't pass through the led bulb now this simple phenomena not only demonstrate about the flow of electrical currents but also demonstrates a very important thing which is how we can make not gates in this situation now, once we have understood NOT gates and we know how NOT gates are built, we can pretty much build any other gates as we want. Now, for simplicity reasons, I'm going to remove and I'm going to, I'm going to not going to build all of the other ones. But however, we're going to start to understand and build these similar gates in Arduino as well. So I'm going to add an Arduino, which is going to be like this, an Arduino Uno R3, which is our favorite, of course. And once we have our Arduino, if you see over here, what we are going to do is we are going to build the same thing okay i'm going to add a switch which is going to be the slide switch and once i have added this switch i am going to connect the ground to the center because this is a very common arrangement usually every electronic circuit does this don't worry if you this is your first time doing this it's pretty easy after a while okay and I'm going to connect this pin to, let's say, pin number six, which is an easy option. And now I'm going to change the colors of this pin, let's say, to red. And think I'm going to remove this from GND. And I'm going to possibly figure out, okay, we need to connect this switch to this. So we can actually, like, also connect, instead of GND, we can also connect a power supply, which might make things a lot more easier or implementation, because sensing a GND... Uh, can require us to pre-trigger the signal which is a little complex concept for people who are learning this for the first time so we don't want to do that in that case i would rather connect it to 5 volts which makes it super easy and it's easy for you as well by the way 
okay and i'm gonna be very uh clean with this thing as i always am perfect and then we have another break from here and make it here perfect okay all right so now we have a, a switch which is going to take inputs and connect to pin number six however you can also connect this pin to pin a0 as well uh, i should have mentioned that but that's something which is like pretty obvious um that you know since we are also connecting a switch you can also connect the switch to a0 as well both of these are absolutely fine uh, i'm going to do it with a0 because a lot of people might be questioning and you know i don't want to make it a confusion i think a0 is a pretty decent option to do with now in this case what would happen if you understand whenever i press the switch at, or i don't press the switch i basically get a reading if i go to the code section and i remove all the code which i have okay all i'm going to do is i am going to read the data from the a0 port so i'm going to go and set to a0 input and i'm going to output that into the serial monitor print to serial monitor in a new line and put it here now if i start the simulation go to my code and go to my serial monitor i can see the values if i turn off the switch and turn it on i can see a little bit of deflection which is there okay this is essentially happening because we are already having some noise over here and we need to get it, uh, get rid of that you can remove the noise with the help of our favorite part resistor and set to our favorite value if you remember that it was 220 ohm and we have done this like this and we flip it 220 okay make some sig and now we are going to remove we're going to move this resistor and place it between the ground and this pin now this part is essentially known as filtration or signal filtration you usually do these things to make sure that your circuit is not noisy as we have right now and noise can cause a lot of problem we go to this circuit and start simulation and once we turn it off you can see we have absolutely zero which is absolutely perfect because that's what we need now once we have figured this out that we know we are able to connect the circuit like this and we're able to get the input and output like this our circuit is pretty much done okay now in this case we are getting the value from this switch and we're plotting it under the software okay and now what we want to do is we want to connect an led bulb okay once we have an led bulb we need to use our favorite resistor which is like this and you you have to set it to 220 ohm ohm and connect it over here okay now this one is terminal 2 and this one is terminal anode and this one usually goes to the cathode which is what i am going to connect to perfect and this one will go essentially go to any pin let it be pin 4 okay now if we see our code we can see right now we are just printing the value okay what we can possibly do is we can have a circuit or we can have a condition where we basically say that whenever we have a noise over here then we don't turn on the led bulb otherwise we want to turn on the led bulb okay that's what we are going to do so uh, if you see over here you have a lot of conditions that you can see okay so we add an if condition which is over here then we go to the input and then we we can also print it in the serially as well but i don't think so that's a good idea okay so uh, if we see this one we are having a comparison system okay so i think i'm going to go with this and put it over here then go to inputs and read the analog pin a0 and you can put it over here if our analog a0 is greater than let's say 200 then what we want we want the led to be bulb to glow okay output set pin to high which pin is it it's pin number four okay don't worry if this is your first time and you feel very overwhelmed with this but what we are doing is we are setting and standardizing the equation in such a way so that it's easier for the software to understand and figure out what it wants what we're doing over here is we are telling the software that if and only if when the reading of the analog pin a0 is greater than 200 then only it turns the pin to high okay let's start the simulation and see what happens now if you see over here we are able to see that the led is glowing but we are able to see that the led is not turning off automatically once you turn it on 
then it remains on because we haven't added a condition where it goes back to the zero state as well. In order to do that, we are going to add a condition which is going to make the spin back to low again. So pin number four and low. Okay. You can also go to control and you have a lot of other option which you where you can have multiple else condition. But even this condition works just fine to be honest. Okay, but I think uh, for simplicity reasons, I would take this one because a lot of people might just get confused that why don't we have an if condition or uh, else condition, I mean, and that might create problems as well. Okay. Okay, let's maybe put this here. Put this here, put this in trash, no problem. And start. Now, if you see, it's automatically going to come down to zero. Okay. Now we are going to basically make a not gate. Okay. And in order to make a not gate, we need to remember that not gate is only achievable if we are doing the exact opposite. Okay. So whenever our values are higher, okay. In that case, the switch is basically turned on and we have to turn off the light. So we have to turn off the light and otherwise we need to turn on the light. Okay. So when you start the simulation, okay. You can see that the switch is off and the light was on. Okay, switch is off, light was on. And that's a, the that's a beauty of the code that we are building. Okay, you have the control and you have the flexibility of designing whatever you want. Okay, you are not restricted by a code form factor. You're also not restricted by a code way of implementing. You can make simple electronic circuits much more definable and softly controlled in your, in if you're using an Arduino. And that beauty basically comes with a little bit of difficulty that is cost. Okay. So if you see over here, you have only, you know, four components, which are there, but Arduino itself is at least five times costlier than all of these things combined. Now, if cost is not a problem, then using a controller might be a good idea. But another thing that happens is that these controllers sometimes fail. However, analog circuits, which are like this, they don't really fail at all. Okay. And they have a very good amount of lifespan in general as well. Now that being said, I'm not saying that using Arduino is a bad idea, because it's definitely not. However, it's very important to understand that which use case you are building the solution for. Okay. Now let's understand more of it and we do another example. Let me close all these things. All right. So we have understood this example, which was pretty clear to us. We have also seen both of these circuits. Now we are going to make another logic. Now this time I'm going to talk about ladder logic. So if you have ever known or came across PLC, okay, which is PLC, PLC are programmable logic controllers. They are essentially used in industry. And the main idea behind a PLC is that it's more like an Arduino. Okay. So really when you talk about Arduino that you can program a couple of things and one by one and other things, it's mostly the same thing. But the catch over here is that unlike Arduino, PLC is more industrial. That means that you are basically having the capability of running a program or running a logic in a much more robust and a much more longer lifetime. Now, since both of these are the same physically in terms of hardware and they both have the same operation, they are pretty comparable as well. So one of the good things to learn and one of the good things to try is to understand if both of them can be, you know, used like the same way as well. And that's what we're going to do. Okay, we're going to build a small sequential LED player, which is going to play or run the LEDs across one by one and see how that logic builds up. Okay, now in order to do that, I'm going to take a lot of LEDs like this. Okay, and I'm going to take the Arduino over here. And then I'm going to start by connecting all the cathodes first. Okay, so let's connect this to this. This to this. This to this. And trust me, it's a very good practice to try it out with small circuits. Then I'm going to change the white color to red. Okay. Then the next one.
all right so now we have four rds and one arduino you should understand that essentially we are replicating plc okay so which means it, it's gonna perform things in a sequential order and that's what we want to go over here as well so let's say that this time you want to have another logic let's take an example that you want to run these LEDs first and then we are going to modify it later so how will you do that set built in LED high okay then a delay which is wait and then put it down to low okay this is our basic okay I am using the wrong block this is not going to go this can go away set pin high is the block that we need goes here goes here and goes here I'm gonna start by pin number three it goes higher and then pin number three again but this time it goes low okay so let's play this Oh, my bad. One thing I missed was to connect all the grounds to the ground. So, we need to fix that. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes that happens. <laughs> Let's play it again. Okay. So, you can see it's now turn on and it should go off as well. Okay. It's not going off because we don't have a weight. So, we have to add another weight here. So, it goes off for one second. Okay goes on goes off goes on goes off okay very important to understand that this should happen in a sequential way perfect so once we have done this we know that it's blinking okay now i'm going to go to the code i'm going to right click duplicate and put it all here okay then i'm going to do it for pin number four pin number four okay and then i'm going to duplicate again this entire structure and I'm going to do it for pin number 5 and 6. Pin 5. And 6. Perfect. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. And it's going to loop back. So, now what we do, what, what we're doing is essentially we're looping out a circle or a circular formation where things are happening one by one by one and we can see it over here okay so we have basically built we have basically built a logic where things are happening in a sequential way okay it's very important for you to understand this happens in a sequential way okay if it's not sequential then it's not basically like a logical way of doing this now let's add a little bit more logic to this it makes it a little more complicated okay let's get rid of all of these things first perfect now we need to have an output and this output is essentially, oh, sorry, we need an input, by the way, sorry. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a potentiometer. Okay. And this potentiometer is nothing but it's going to, you know, give us the output over here at analog zero. As we have done this a lot of times. So I'm sure you must be experienced. If you are not, make sure that you check out all the previous videos. It's going to give you lots of examples and everything. And uh, connect this thing to ground. connect this thing to the 5 volts and change the color to red perfect so now we have done this and this is how it looks okay now when we start the simulation nothing is going to happen because we don't really have any code what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the analog A0 pin, output it onto our screen. Where is it? Yeah, serial monitor. Okay. Now we have this up and running. So what we are doing right now is essentially building the scope. And the scope is that we are going to read the value from the sensor. Okay. And then pl going to plot it in the new line. Let's start the code and you can see it's zero as we change it we can see the increase in the value okay perfect now since we have, we can see the change in the value i'm going to take and divide this thing okay let me open a calculator 
now it is google also has calculator okay so what i'm going to do is i am going to uh, type in 1023 divided by 4 okay oh wait c equals to so 2255 more like 256 okay so that's going to be our first interval now what we are going to build right now is basically as you turn on this no knob i want one by one the leds should glow in a sequential order okay the way you can do that is with the help of the logics so we're going to have an if logic again okay and over here what i'm going to do i'm going to have a math operation okay now if the value is going to be greater than 255 okay then what is going to happen okay i think i'll go with an if else block because that's much more helpful <laughs> Uh, I think that's not the best block to be honest. Let me disconnect and put here and put this back here. Okay. Take input, analog input A0. Okay. And this is how it's going to go. Perfect. So we say that if the value is going to be greater than or equal to, okay, greater than or equal to. 255 or maybe i think let's let's keep it at first tire so if it's less than okay less than or equal to 255 okay then it, the first led should glow which means it's on the first level okay and then uh we have to put it to the output set pin high which pin high we want we want pin number three to go high okay otherwise we can turn it off that's one or we can have another math block inside okay it's gonna go like this where i'm gonna put in another logic where i'm gonna read the input again this time i say that if the value is greater than 255 then this is going to happen now you have multiple condition as well okay uh, which are also there but i think it's a little difficult for you to understand it right now so i'm not going to dive in deep to those things okay so <laughs> don't worry uh, i understand you know it's a little complicated for a lot of people so i'm going to keep it a little simple okay so i think in this case what is going to happen is i am just keeping a logic that if the value is greater than 255 okay then this is going to happen then let's say pin number four is gonna glow okay now otherwise we are going to also set it to the having the pin over here in else condition to pin three as low by the way very important otherwise it won't never turn off and then we'll make this pin four also low Okay, perfect. Yep. Now if you see over here, okay, what exactly is happening? We have both the LEDs going. Okay. Now if you see what happened is that LED four is not turning off. Okay. It's probably because we have ne never reaching this condition, and that is a very usual case. In that case, you can also do like this, that you can put the uh, LED 4 zero point over here as well. So you can move this block and put it here and then run it again. In this case, this is going to glow, otherwise it's going to glow. So you see what we did? We basically have set a condition that if the value is greater than this, it, then that's going to happen. If the value is not greater than that, it's, then that's going to happen. Okay. Now, this simple logic building, okay, even this is very simple, but this is like a fundamental principle of a lot of concepts that you'll see in everyday life, okay? You take it volume knobs, you take it like controllers, you take it like, you know, speed accelerators, you take cars, automobiles, so many things, okay? 
all of these things have the same internal electronics and they have the same internal logic of how are we controlling things. Okay, so that's very important for you to understand that if you don't know how to build these logics, then it's going to be a very big problem. Now, the task for you is to essentially figure out and make something which is similar uh, with this Arduino and with this speed knob and try building it something else. Okay, now that is going to be very important thing. And let's move forward now. Okay. Now, understanding these concepts was pretty easy and we did quite a lot of uh, basic implementation. Now we'll move on to something more complicated as well uh, because I think that's pretty important. We have a lot of components here, so I'll go to this all. Um, and if you see, we, we can see that there are a lot of switches. Uh, one of these things that I want to highlight over here is this dip switches, okay? Um, I don't want to play around with all these things, so I think I'll keep this. But we'll keep the dip switches in the center. And if you see what happens is that these DIP switches or dip switches, as people say, are nothing but like simple IO switches, which are very small. So if I start the simulation, you can actually control these switches as well. You know, you can see that these are like just normal switches, which you can turn on or turn off, depending on what you want to do. Now, these dip switches also allow you to have configurations. Okay. Now, what do I mean by that? Okay. A lot of people don't really know what configurations are. So let's start by understanding configurations and it makes it a lot more easier as well. Okay. So let's uh, let's take a dip switch like this one. Okay, it's nothing but a slide switch which is physically there as well. I can actually show you a dip switch. Dip switch. Okay, uh, it's this is how it looks. It's as you can see, it's very small, very compact, very you know very easy to very easy to you know mount on a PCB. But the main idea is that it allows for different configurations to be there in a circuit. Now, when I say configurations, it means different settings that you want to physically control from a switch. Okay. This can also mean that you want to set the controller into certain condition or you want to make the controller into certain mode so that the controller behaves like that. Okay. Let's take the simple example, the one that we have already taken over here uh, on the side and we'll re implement it again. Okay. So I'll just put an Arduino. And in this case, I am going to use the dip switch in a much more effective way. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to connect this dip switch. I'm going to connect 1B to this point, 1A to 5 volt. Okay. And that's it. Okay. And I'm going to go to the code. I am going to click on this Arduino. Okay. Because I want to work on this code. So this Arduino and then code. Okay. And now you can see that we have a code already there. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to take the inputs read analog a0 okay and i'm going to put print it on the output over here okay then i'm going to start the simulation now if i press the switch off or on okay it's not making that much difference because there's a lot of noise so first we have to fix that and you remember how we do it we use a resistor and we use our favorite resistor which was 220 ohm and then flip it over like this and then connect the ground and then connect the analog A0. Perfect. Let's start the circuit now. Go to the code. As you can see, whenever we turn on or turn off the switch, we are getting a reading, okay, which is absolutely perfect. Now, since we have figured this out, we know that we can essentially set up a condition on the controller that will tell the controller which mode it has to go on. Okay. And that's what exactly I'm going to do. Okay. We are going to set a condition that whenever this switch is in zero state, then what it has to do. And when it's in one state, then what it has to do. Okay. So I'm going to recreate the LED circuit as well. Let's add the LED circuit over here over here over here i think make them oh i think yeah perfect hmm. and uh, yeah now i'm gonna connect all of them it's not the best color but it's fine
perfect. Now I'm going to change the color to red. Perfect. So I'm going to go over here and uh, I have a condition of if statement. Okay. So if uh, this value is the reading value, analog reading value is greater than let's say 500 you can also keep it 100 as well it can be any number above 0 so if it's above 0 or you can actually keep it above 0 as well anything above 0 then what I want to do is I want to flash the lights um, let's say 214 so I'm gonna go on output take this one pen two okay yeah i think this is the wrong one my bad yeah this one and this one have pin number two have pin number four go high have a wait for one second and then go low on all these things as well Pin two and four. Perfect. This is done. That is done. We have done this. Makes sense. Okay. Now I'm going to duplicate this section. So I'm going to keep it here. Duplicate it. Put here. Move this block away. Okay. Move this here as well. And just to give you a little idea move this all here and now change this to pin number three pin number five pin number three pin number five perfect all right now this goes here and start the simulation now you can see pin number three and pin number five are glowing okay one thing we have forgotten is to add another delay over here at the end so very important perfect nice so at the simulation okay and now once we change the settings to this mode we can see that the other LEDs are glowing okay now as you can see what we did is we basically built a switcher that changes the mode of an Arduino controller to different setting now where do you think this might be helpful it can be helpful in a lot of settings, a lot of places. It can be on a stage concert. It can be on a medical machine. It can be on a... Hmm. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, it can be on a healthcare machine as well. It can be also on, in cars as well. You know, let's say you're making only one circuit board for like uh, BMW A5. And then you want to use the same circuit for BMW A4. You can just have configuration switches, which are going to set and the controller into different car settings. And then you can have the same code base. Makes it quite easy, actually. Okay. Now that we have understood this thing, we know how it works and what exactly we are looking for. Okay. And all we need to do is we need to use this in some sort of way or the other. Okay. And of course, there are multiple ways of using this. There are multiple ways of implementing this. And all you need to do is, is you need to exploit the power of understanding and build something incredible okay but that being said okay we have understood this topic and we are ready to move forward okay so now that we have understood different modes in arduino one other thing that i would like you to see and understand is that you can use a similar circuit for also making a speed controller and a speed switcher now speed switcher is nothing but a control switch that allows you to physically monitor and con not monitor actually control the speed of a robot depending on which mode you want to be it in okay so for simplifying processes, I'm going to say that whenever the switch is on, I'm going to be in high speed mode. 
If the switch is off, it's going to be in low speed mode. For that thing to happen, we can see a simple example where we take a motor, okay, and where we just take a simple power supply. It can be a 9 volt battery, like this, and then flip it over like this, okay. Now, once this is done and we have the switch, what we need to do is we need to have a resistor. Okay. Now, the resistor is essentially going to help us slow down the speed. Okay. I'm going to keep it 1 kilo ohm. I know it's not our favorite 220 ohm, but I think that's fine. Now, we are going to route this positive through the resistor. And then the resistor is going to go to the motor. Okay. Then this thing negative is going to go directly to the negative. Now, if you start the motor, you can see it's only at 6 RPM. That's very slow. So, I think I'm going to reduce the resistor to 500 ohm and see what happens. It's 13 RPM, maybe 100, maybe 10. Yeah, 10 sounds reasonable. 10 ohm gives me a good amount of speed. Now, or 200 obviously. So, yeah, right now we are at 200 RPM at when we set the resistor to 10 ohm. Okay. Now what we need, we need to control the speed and we need to have two different modes. Now, as I said, we are going to have the control and possibility of using the switch as a speed shifter. So that's what we are going to do. We are going to take the switch, flip it over like this. Okay. Keep it here like this. Okay. And connect this to this and then this to this. Perfect. Now, once this is done, we are going to start the simulation and we're going to see what happens. Okay. Right now it's in or the off state, so it's at 286. When we press this button, it's gonna reduce and it's at 200 RPM. You see what happened? We basically built a logic gate, we basically built a logic, and this logic is not really having any sort of circuits or any sort of complicated controllers, rather, it's having a very simple principle. Whenever we are going to turn on or turn off the switch, we are actually switching different speeds. And this is not really helpful. It also gives us a lot of control over the other components as well. Now imagine you are having a huge electric car or a huge electric robot. In that case, you want to control the speed of the robot, but there is no direct means of doing that. Now this approach helps you do exactly the same. Okay, you have the control and possibility of switching the speed while maintaining the rest of the components. Now what I'm going to do I'm going to have another switch, which is a slide switch. Now, what do I need a slide switch? We're going to see right now. I'm going to connect this here, connect this here. And you can see nothing is attached over here as well. Okay. But we're going to fix that. We're going to remove this off. We're going to copy this resistor, paste it over here like this, connect this to this, and then connect this to this. Perfect. Now, if you see what exactly is going to happen, we are going to switch between different modes and we're going to switch between different speeds with the help of multiple resistors. Okay. When you start the simulation, it's at 200 RPM. When I switch it, okay, it's not changing. Can you imagine, can you, can you guess why it's not changing? Because the electric circuit is not really complete directly. Okay. The way we fix it is we, we have to change the center position to the main component. Okay. So always remember that the center one is going to be the one which is going to be the deciding factor, which is going to go over here, okay, like this. And this is going to go here. Now, whenever you switch the circuit on this side or this mode, okay, essentially it's going to bypass and go directly to here, okay. And whenever you connect it to this side, it's going to take the two resistors and connect it to the other way around. So it's at 286 RPM and then it drops to 153. 286, 153. Pretty easy, right? Okay. This simple structure, yet helpful structure, helps you bring down and helps you make the circuit much more reliable and helps you make things and make safety precautions much more easier, okay? This simulation circuits are not only easy to try out, but they're quite safe as well, okay? You can also now add more motors and test this as well. Let me add another motor, okay? And then let me connect the negative to the negative and change the color to black. Perfect. Looks incredible. Then we have the red one. Take the red one and change to red and then start the simulation. Now you can see this and this, this and this. 
and we are pretty easily able to we can we can pretty easily you know change the speed of both the motors as we want okay and this gives us not only is the control but also the flexibility of deciding what speed you want to work at okay now this flexibility also comes at a little bit of problem the problem is that if you increase the number of devices the speed is eventually going to drop down and your calculation has to be redone every time you want okay in order to solve this problem we can do one thing that can help us solve this in a much more effective way i'm going to keep one of the resistors and i'm going to put a potentiometer now you might have already guessed what we're going to do we are going to dynamically adjust the output voltage from this device and we're going to see how that is possible okay so in order to use this thing it's pretty easy we are going to make sure that we have one of the terminals connected to the negative and the second one connected to the positive okay perfect now once this is done essentially speaking you are done with the potentiometer and now what you're going to do you are going to connect this to the positive part let me fix this let me fix the red one and let's start and now you can see okay you can see it's already stopped and we are going to fix that as well okay you see that you don't really have a lot of control okay it just stops right away okay it usually happens in these circuits the fix is use of a resistor i'm telling you if you understand the use of a resistor in a lot of places you can pretty much you know use it for a lot of things okay over here it's going to help us balance out the output and input at both the stages and it's going to maintain a balance in both the potentials okay so once we start the simulation again let's see what happens nothing okay no problem sometimes we need to have a different configuration so there are two three configuration of the circuit that we can try out let's bring it to black start the simulation and you can see the drop okay so we are close because i can see that the speed is changing and we are having a drop although the sensitivity is still not that confident okay no problem we are going to remove both of these and have it run or the dry run let's try this out okay i think one of the configuration which is could be a problem is the resistance of the potentiometer itself okay so let's maybe try to set it to 100 ohms and set it to ohms start the simulation and we have the control now you see multiple iterations of this you know you can the all the thing that i did earlier you can actually try all of these things out and you will eventually get the result that you need okay now all of these things can be quite you know difficult in the start but trust me once you have practiced them enough you will be more than competent to do this on your own as well now once this is done and you have a working circuit which looks like this you also have the capability and possibility of having other sensors like a light sens sensor okay now a light sensor or a potentiometer is nothing but a sensor which allows you to control the speed of the motor depending on how much light is falling on it okay now this is very basic logic building but all of these are very good concepts to build a very competent and very strong basics for you know your robot perfect and i'm going to change it to black red change it to this change this one to red as well perfect now we have this and start the simulation you see we are at 0 rpm right now i'm going to click on this thing and i'm going to increase the light and as we increase the light you can see we are changing the resistance all the resistance is very high so we are not really reaching a really high speed but still we can see the change that we need now all of these sensors allow you to basically create a whole bunch of combinations and a whole bunch of you know different iterations that you can buy and you can create for your, or your robot and all of these configuration can be run in a much more planned way if you're using an arduino as well okay i am hoping that you have understood this concept as well let's move ahead now to move forward we are going to understand and build a couple of robotic structures and see them as well okay in order to do that i'm going to 
show you different iterations of robots of how they are configured and what exactly they are okay so first of all we are going to start with a two motor or two power wheel robot configuration which is also having a free wheel as well so two wheel robot okay now if you see these robots they usually look like this okay they either are having just two wheels or sometimes they also have a free wheel in the front okay now you might be thinking what is a free wheel okay free wheel is nothing but a caster wheel okay caster wheel now caster wheels are like this okay they basically can go in different directions do whatever they want and they the one that you saw over here is known as a ball caster wheel so it looks like this okay it's nothing but like a ball which is over here and it can go in any direction as you, as you want it to be okay the whole idea is that the main push is being given by these wheels and the forward wheel is nothing but just to you know stay there and just to you know support the bot of not touching the ground okay and that's what is the most important thing i know there are self self balancing robots which have more sensors that allow them to balance themselves as well but we are not talking about that right now okay we're only talking about these kind of robots which are easy to deploy and they don't really have a lot of complications and that's what is are going to be focused now we once we have understood these structures and once we have understood these robots we can clearly see that you know these robots are quite helpful and they're quite you know generic as well now in this case as well once we go back to our circuit and once we go back to this design we basically have two v two motors which are going to power the robot okay now apart from this we are going to make another two robot motors okay which are going to be you know used for powering the entire robot so these robots are known as four wheel drive motors four wheel drive robots i mean yeah and they look like this okay they can have multiple shapes they can have multiple designs they can have multiple things and you know you can pretty much buy them uh, as well from amazon and that's a very cheap as well let me show you um four wheel robot yeah you can buy it like the entire body with the motors and everything for like 842 rupees uh these are their cheaper so 634 these are all laser cut you know uh, there are multiple variations of all of these things you can buy any of it you want or uh, doesn't really matter but it does really matter if you are buying you know with v's like these v's like these you know uh, depending on what use case you have or uh, you can also buy these as well but they're qu quite costly <laughs> but yeah i mean they even i think but even it's costly it definitely it must be having like a lot of strength inside and a lot of you know talk uh, for the entire bot so that what makes them you know quite expensive as well um but yeah i think for a, a very decent robot chassis i'm very sure these must be like a good ones so if you if you want to be sure i would suggest you just you know go to your youtube um and just you know paste this link and you'll see uh, the robot chassis okay this is an advertisement so we might have a video for that kit I can't see it. Uh, it's from AM Robotics. Okay, AM Robotics programmable. Oh, okay, I think it's monster truck. Do it yourself. Kit. Yep. Let's try this. Hmm. That's quite rare. But usually you'll find like uh, videos for all the kits that you're looking for. And let's say let's take something easy. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, maybe let's see this one. Four wheel drive robot chassis, yellow bio motors. Okay, let's just copy all of it. Let me just and put it straight over here. You see, you can find a lot of videos for these video for these uh, you know robots uh, of how to assemble them, how to fix them, and a lot of other things as well. Which makes them quite helpful you know uh, and very easy as well since there are so much tutorials and so many things that you can learn from it, it it's pretty easy i mean it's obvious and it's pretty easy that you can build these off uh, on your own okay but that was just to give you an idea coming back to our main design another thing that we want to do or another thing that we want to look at is essentially the possibility of having the entire robot structure in a much more simplified way okay how we do that we basically connect the forward motors or the one side of the motors together 
So in that case, the negative goes to the negative. And the positive goes to the positive. And the same happens for the other ones as well. Perfect. So we have this arrangement. Okay. Now this arrangement not only allows us to control these motors in a much more efficient way, they also give the robot a much more better control as well. Okay. Because now you don't need to control four motors, rather you need to just control two of them. Okay. Why two? Because the left side becomes one set and the right side becomes the other set. Okay. This not only helps the electronic engineer to you know work smartly, but also makes the robot quite easy as well. Now we need an ultra in 3D which is a motor driver. Now, you see the motor driver itself was a little complicated for a lot of people, so I'm gonna go over it again, okay? I'm gonna keep the motor driver in over here. I think this is a better place to be. And uh, I'm gonna connect one of the outputs to the output over here. Now you might be thinking which output am I connecting? I'm connecting output one to the negative of this motor, okay? To the black part of the motor. Then I'm gonna change the color of the wire to red or to black, okay? Then uh, we'll start another one. So this is gonna go into the output two. And this is like this. Perfect. Now this is being done we have one side connected. And then we do it for this one. And then we do it for the other one. The black one, perfect. Now this is entirely done. Now we're gonna connect the grounds. together perfect now this is also done or uh, this is also done now we have everything up and set okay now we need to add components which are going to control the motor that we are going to do in a bit first we are going to have the power supply and then we are going to have the buttons So I want four buttons specifically. And this arrangement. And then I'm gonna connect all the buttons together. All the positives together essentially. And this goes here. Perfect. Now this being done and we have routed this thing, we're gonna change to let's say blue color. And then we are going to connect it here. Input one and then input two. Perfect. Perfect. Now we have done this arrangement. Now we have the enable pins which needs to be powered. So we need a, like a routing system for this. Change it to red.
stop it and then change the power of this perfect okay so now we have everything connected except the grounds so and the power lines and that's what we're going to do we are going to connect the power lines of this together okay we also need to connect the power line of all the switches back to the controller okay i think i'm gonna put here perfect looks great connect the negative to the negative with the ground black connect the positive to the positive like this and then power it up using the red one okay and then start the simulation okay okay i think we overloaded this thing <laughs> ah surprising i think we might need to yeah reduce the components a little bit let's try refreshing actually It says the simulation starting error. I'm not sure why the internet is connected and everything is connected, but it should not really give me an error. Hmm. But this circuit essentially is the one which drives the motors. Okay, I think the power supply was a problem. But I'm not sure how is it a problem. This is just a power supply. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to check the enable pins. Enable 3, 4, power 2. Enable power 1. Okay. Let's do a different routing. Maybe connect power 2 and power 1. Okay. So I'm going to just connect the power to power and the enable to enable. Okay. So enable is going to be like this internally connected to pink color. I think pink is very similar to red. So let's not go with that. Gray color. Okay. Perfect. And then take the red one. Like this. And now let's try powering it up. So using a sec second battery as well. It can be a three volt battery just for this controller. Okay. Power one. And we'll connect to the common ground. Perfect. It's a lot of wires now, but don't worry. I am going to make it a little better. So it's a lot more easier for you to understand. Perfect. Start the simulation. Okay, it's some power, I don't know, some software based error or something, but the power configuration are correct. All of these things are correct. Uh, and this should probably be the one which it should be running. Now, I have not sure why the software is not taking the simulation, but this is how you arrange it and this is how you build it. 
and that's the only way you can you know make the mode driver run okay so without uh, any further ado i would see you in the next one i hope you are enjoying it so far